Lesson 16. Riot at Ephesus. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Reading Acts 19. Background. Paul courageously presented the truth at Athens with a somewhat depressing result. He moved on to Corinth, where the gospel of salvation was better received. Paul lived and worked for 18 months with Aquila and Priscilla. Acts 18. On his return to Jerusalem, Paul passed through Ephesus, stopping there to enter a synagogue where he reasoned with the Jews, as was his custom. Acts 18 and 19. Paul promised to return. He sailed to Antioch from where he had set out on a second missionary journey some three years before. Acts 15 verse 40. Background to Ephesus. Life Ephesus on the shores of the Aegean Sea was a thriving cosmopolitan seaport town. The climate was mild and the region was noted for everything that made for softness and luxurious living. The people were friendly and refined, but loved luxury, music, dancing, elegant clothing, festivals, and whatever else was pleasant to the flesh. Commerce. It was the commercial centre of Roman Asia. It was the principal harbour for shipping from Italy and Greece. It lay at the end of the caravan route with the east, and well-made roads connected it with the interior. The city was wealthy and prosperous, and a population from many nations flocked there to share its opportunities. Among them, a Jewish group large enough to have their own synagogue. Acts 18 verse 19 and 26 and 19 verse 8. Wonders. Ephesus was a university city. Its people included many of the wise of this world, but its glory was the magnificent temple of Diana, once described as the first wonder of the ancient world. The image of the goddess Diana was supposed to have fallen down from heaven, and mysterious symbols inscribed on the idol were used as a charm to heal. The study of these symbols was an elaborate science and many books were compiled about it. The Rebaptism of John's Disciples, Acts 19 verses 1 to 7. Paul set out about AD 55 on his third preaching campaign and arrived back at Ephesus. His first encounter was with 12 new disciples. Paul perhaps realized something was wrong for he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit since you became believers? Verse 2. They answered, We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Paul's doubts were confirmed. They had only heard of John's baptism. They were ready to accept the full truth as Paul explained that the Messiah John had taught them about had come. Salvation was available now by believing the gospel of salvation and being baptised into the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mark 16 verses 15 to 16. For there was no other name whereby they might be saved. Acts 4 verse 12. So Paul rebaptized them into the name of the Lord Jesus. After their baptism, Paul gave them the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in foreign languages and prophesied. Verse 6. With Paul, they formed a strong foundation on which the new ecclesia in Ephesus could grow. Teaching the Truth. Acts 19, verse 8 to 20. After boldly speaking for three months in the synagogue, Paul was forced to leave because of the anger of the Jews. Taking his disciples with him, Paul moved his daily discussions to the school of Tyrannus. He was so effective that after two years of teaching and special miracles, the whole population of the province of Asia, Jew and Greek, 
had heard of the gospel of God. Verse 10. Since Ephesus was visited by many from other centres of Asia, every city throughout the area was affected by Paul's teaching. Although Paul had never visited them, Ecclesias grew up in places like Colossae, Hierapolis, Laodicea. Colossians 1 verse 6 and 7, chapter 2 verse 1, chapter 4 verses 12 and 13. As well as preaching the gospel, Paul used the Holy Spirit to do wonderful miracles to prove that what he said was the truth of God's word. God in this way did special miracles by Paul. Even handkerchiefs and aprons from Paul's body removed people's illnesses and seven false Jews who thought they could cure people simply by using the name of Jesus Christ were shown to be wrong and shamed for their deception. At last some of the people could see the worship of idols was very wrong. Many false teachers and magicians, priests of the old Persian religions, changed their ways and followed the truth. They were so convinced that they burned their books on magic. Books valued at 50,000 pieces of silver or 50,000 days wages, millions of dollars in today's money. Principle for living, enthusiasm. The secret to Paul's success was his constancy and enthusiasm in the work. He told the Ephesian elders that he had been with them at all seasons. Acts 20 verse 18. He had worked hard to teach them the gospel every day, every week, for three years. He had no time off to please himself. He taught publicly every day, probably from 11am to 4pm, during the time when the schoolroom was empty. Then he taught them in their own private homes. Acts 20 verse 20. He had kept nothing from them, but told them all he knew of God's purpose. Paul was so motivated by God's love that he wanted to give all his effort to please his God. He valued the truth so much that Paul wanted to tell all men and women of the greatness and love of the God of Israel. The opposition of Demetrius. Acts 19 verses 21 to 27. The Ephesians were convinced that Diana was pleased by the worship of small idols kept in the temple or in the homes of the devotees. They were believed to bring good luck and so were carried about for extra protection. Most of these small idols were of precious metals, which created a large industry to provide the metals themselves and the craftsmen to fashion them. One of the most influential men in the idol making business was Demetrius. While he claimed to be interested in Diana, he was more interested in his own wealth. Demetrius was roused to speak against Paul's message that there existed only one true God who had power over all men. The people were learning from Paul that Diana and her magnificent temple were useless. He called together the craftsmen and spoke of the obvious fact that since Paul had begun preaching, there had been a steady decline in the sales of their gods. He very cunningly claimed, for the benefit of those bystanders who were devotees of Diana, that this meant that the goddess Diana herself was being neglected. The riot, Acts 19 verses 28 to 41. Shortly, both the true devotees and the greedy merchants began to cry, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! The noise and commotion soon spread throughout the city, causing much confusion. Great thronging crowds rushed to the enormous theatre, which could hold more than 50,000 spectators. So chaotic was the scene that many were caught up in the frenzy, not even knowing why they were there. Verse 32. Gaius and Aristarchus, 
being recognised as Paul's companions, were dragged along to the theatre. Learning of their peril, Paul resolved to make his way to the theatre, but was held back by friends and even leaders of the city. They told him that he couldn't hope to calm the crazed mob. Some Jews at the scene tried to put a speaker forth. They chose a man by the name of Alexander, but the crowd recognised him as a Jew and not a devotee of Diana and yelled all the louder. In fact, their frenzy was so great that they shouted, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! for two hours. Eventually, the shouting ceased long enough for the town clerk to attempt to address the crowd. The main points he made were, All believers and worshippers of their goddess knew her image had been a gift from the god Zeus and was well preserved in her temple. Paul's work in Ephesus had never included insulting Diana or trying to obtain wealth belonging to her temple. The Romans prided themselves on a system of court justice and a rule of law, and Demetrius and his friends should use the established court procedure if they felt he had a legitimate complaint. Any further writing could bring a charge of insurrection against themselves. After the crowd disbanded, Paul was free to carry out his plans to work his way back to Jerusalem. Summary and lessons for us. God gives his faithful followers strength to live and witness to others about his plan of salvation. We have the complete message necessary to carry on the work to which Paul so diligently applied himself. The new brethren were prepared to publicly burn the symbols of idolatry and to turn to quiet reverence to worship the one true God. The idol makers were more interested in their wealth than their goddess, and religion was to them only a means of making money. Paul and his friends were rescued from a dangerous situation by the action of the Ephesian town clerk. We can see that this was the hand of God saving Paul for his, as yet, incompleted work. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to readthebible at gmail.com And we look forward to you listening to the next lesson, which will be called Paul's Farewell to the Ephesians.